Hello Trailblazers! Welcome back to Insights by OutsideX, a one-stop shop for all things IPM here at Dom's Nalsar. So today uh, we have our guests who, you, who are everything that you see in a college fest. It's the reels that we post and much more. We have Moksha from the batch of 2027 and Vinayak from the batch of 2026. So they have been involved in various cultural fests, DJ nights, plays and the band. And I hope that this conversation is in fact able to draw parallels from the life you have in a B school and to the cultural and that life that you lead, the college life as mellifluously as they perform. So thank you so much guys for being here. Uh, really glad to be uh, conversating with you guys about this. So in fact, um, I want to know, I mean, there is a lot of mechanical um, aspect of life that is associated with B schools, with management, but there is then your artistry that takes place. So how do you guys keep that passion alive of, you know, uh, talk of uh, pursuing your art while coming to a B school? And I mean, um, what's that transition from coming to school and from going into your college life been? Um, when I want to do things. So first of all, thank you so much for calling me here. I'm really excited to be a part of this podcast. And in fact, to be sitting on the other side of the camera right. because that feels so good. So answering your question basically, Jigyasa, we, uh, I came to this campus uh, two years back. One year I spent uh, online. So basically when I came here on campus, being a B-School student, you understand that your schedule is really hectic. So taking a part out for your hobbies and extracurriculars becomes really important. So giving you a very real life example here, let's just take an example of all of us are sitting together, right. we're listening to a song right. and then one idea pops up in somebody's mind, you know, this song is really nice. How about we sing and then we start jamming. That's basically a wonderful experience if you think about it that way when seven people together are sitting and just jamming together, basically three chords are playing and we're just switching. And that is that is an experience you won't get anywhere else except for a college. Now the reason why all these experience are, experiences are really important right. for all of us is basically when we are in college, of course there's your uh, competitive exams, uh, your exams that in your college, your classroom uh, studies going on. So basically whatever you learn in your classroom matters. But whatever experience that you gain outside your classroom matter even more. Right. That's what I feel. So it's not only about like indulging in extracurriculars just makes you happy, right. but makes you a complete person when you talk to other people. So it helps you with networking because it makes you understand other people too. Right. And it also helps you understand that how basically a society is working. Right. So that's what I feel where extracurriculars get really important. Right, right. What about you, Moksha? I mean, you have been, you were in your, I mean, like those artistry that you portrayed as from what the conversation that we've had is that you were really involved in this, in your school as well, doing a lot of things. So how was that transition into like, I mean, pursuing that in college? What, what do you think about it? In school as well, I was very much into dramatics and events and all of that. But then the transition is real, you know, from, from a school to a, to a college, you're in a very cocooned sort of environment in your school. Here, when we talk of opportunities, we talk of a platform, they are much greater. Right. Possibilities are here endless in a way we can say. So um, I took time initially to sort of settle down and right. to, you know, loosen up and once that happened i think you ultimately find your people you find your place and that sort of happened and that is when i made it in the band and i started singing i started participating in skits and also that is how the transition was for me and completely agreeing with vinayak you know apart from acads what else do you have to offer as a person, I think that completely depends on how you participate in these events, the, be it DJ nights, be it fests, they sort of make your personality holistic. Right, right. So, I mean, uh, what, how has Nalsar uh, been a platform for you guys while, you know, pursuing these kind of cultural activities and being involved with Vinayak, why don't you? So, basically, when we look at school life, right. whenever you had to perform something, you had a very professional stage there, let's right. just say annual day. Right or something like a cultural night there. 
so when you look at that you had to prepare for it so much you had to like be like a diamond there so your your best there when i came to college here i had the same idea in my mind okay but then when i met the people here so just giving you an example i met this guy called harsh so him and i uh used to sing a lot right. we still sing a lot one day there was this dj night and before every single dj night what we have to do is that there's a talent night okay. before that for half an hour so All people right. prepare a little bit like just a day before the dj night and we they perform on the dj night so basically i was like okay we can do that too and we just impromptu we just went on stage and performed this piece by anup jain called barish so a very easy piece but then everybody like turned their to- like lights on and everything it felt so good so it made me realize that when you perform on stage it's not about you performing really well it's just that you connect to other people right right so basically what nal sir here taught me is that no matter what you can do no matter how you're good at it as long as you can connect to other people it just becomes like a very good source of happiness right. and gives you an escape from all the studies and everything that is there right. and helps you like escape the mundaneness of this college life right, right. and uh, i think uh, a talent like uh, talent night was also sort of a catalyst for you as well moksha so i mean uh, you began with uh, say singing uh, in one of the uh, cultural nights that we had so how was that like moksha why did you go ahead with it i mean what was the idea behind that i mean what was the inspiration tell me so um later the last year we had one event by ethereal which is our cultural club uh, it was called serene and they had organized an entire cultural night so this entire student body was free to come and participate whatever they would want to so people from our batch were thinking of performing a group song a, me- a medley of a couple of bollywood songs so i was very skeptical at first should i go should i not go like when i said things are very you know spontaneously plans are made and you go and perform so that sort of hit me i i was i was like let's just go ahead and do it i went there and uh, that sort of as you said was a catalyst i realized maybe i should put myself out there more and after that i participated in all the other cultural nights that followed so right right it's very interesting i think there is one aspect of you best performing and then i think with this cultural club you being a, a member and a, 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 playing a pretty important role within that cultural club so how is that you know one there is one thing where you are performing in a, a cultural club and another is where you are managing it so i mean exactly. how different is it i mean like uh, being on the stage or being behind the curtains i mean what's the difference so like when i two really different aspects when we perform it's not basically like we're actually performing we're enjoying it right like so when we made the band uh i'll give you a very real life instance here uh moksha had her uh, auditions and she sang really she has a really powerful voice so just as a joke she started singing uh jugni and i was like wow this is lovely i want this in the band right right that's how moksha came into the band and similarly one day mokshit comes and he's like i play the keyboard and like show me something right. and he shows me this wonderful piece that he played on this keyboard right and i was like you also come so that's how this band was created it was not anything professional nothing professional about it it was just we came together we wanted to have fun but at the same time we wanted to portray ki this is the culture of nalsar right doms nalsar to be exact and when we talk about the management side of it of course um, so being a part of ethereal for almost a year now um, i wanted ethereal to be a place where people can experiment with a lot of hobbies okay. so that's why we introduced something called a cultural friday so every alternate fridays we used to keep these events where anybody can come right sit with us right. perform impromptu no judgment everybody is enjoying their fridays and basically there's no monetary uh, you know monetary transaction or anything like that it's just you come you have fun you learn about other people and that's how basically it was other than that some events that we 
you know basically we had this fashion show none of us ever could plan a fashion show basically you know law business university and somehow we pulled that off and so many people came every single person from the ipm batch performed did the ramp walk nobody did ever do it but they did it so well because it was not about you know we want to win is just that okay i want to try it out right, so right. that's what mattered and I, yeah i think i think the fashion show in itself was such a brilliant <laughs> exemplary thing to do when portraying the culture yeah. of uh, um, nalsar as well so i think the fa- the fashion show here was part of the zera fest that we host every year by the ipm batches and moksha you were a very integral part of it and you and uh, uh, talk to me about that experience i mean you being part of the sponsorship committee there i mean how different was it from your previous experiences of performing on stage i mean what was the uh right so it was fairly different i think uh i had never zera was the first ever um, fest that i was a part of in terms of organizing it right. i was a part of the sponsorship committee and as you said like in a b school it's it gives you that exposure where it is a practical life application of skills that you actually learn in, in the classroom so being a part of the sponsorship committee you have to talk to people you have to pitch the fest to them right. so you learn a lot of you learn how to apply the skills that you've learned in your classroom in a way so that was uh, how zera has sort of helped me right and so how do feel how do you feel how different is it i mean i i mean the way that you to zera for that matter and you know uh, i mean is it important that you feel that uh, one should be uh, in, in involved in these kind of activities i mean there's a lot of apprehension that goes ki i mean my academics are there i don't want to miss out and uh, and there is also that fear of missing out uh, in terms of academics and then feeling like I, if i go and pursue these kind of things i would lack there i mean so where is that balance where is that how do you make a choice if there is a situation where you make a choice when i go okay so first of all i find like i think that cultural nights and events like zera are really important right. if we look at college life per se because um, you we all will go for jobs and internships in the future and let me be very clear about it because your managers that you're going to be with every weekend they'll make plans right. now you can be the best person or at the job but if you are not close with your managers or something like that if you don't have that human aspect while a relationship with this person right then it will kind of hinder your prospects in the future right. that's why all these cultural nights cultural events are really important if you look at it and they are a real like really integral part of your b, b- school life anywhere mm-hmm. in particular so now one of the other reasons why cultural night is important according to me is basically you have you get a very hands on experience on management so you've read everything on paper and you might be the best person like you've remembered every single concept out there but let's just say you have to finally implement it now if you can implement it very efficiently and very effectively that makes you a good manager and these okay. cultural events are one of those things where you can actually try it out and actually hone your actual skills right so i mean it is very part of what exactly. you study in the class exactly. like i mean like there's one thing you're learning theoretically and one thing is applying that i mean um uh, moksha why what do you think i mean how uh, Im- did you always feel like you were into um, you know singing music and all of these things or was it nalsa here that made you trigger uh, that flame in you and to get into all of these uh, activities i mean was there were you always sort of into it or i mean what was that uh, i mean yeah i was always sort of interested in it from my school time as well i mean i must have been in what third grade when i went on stage and did my first skit ever and uh, since then throughout my school i've been involved in say let's say dramatics or singing but coming to college is like getting a very different platform altogether right. it's a different level of opportunity that you get here so my interests were definitely amplified after coming to college like i never experimented with singing as when i said my audition was not even planned i didn't even fill the form for auditioning so but things just sort of aligned and 
made me realize that you know maybe I should pursue these interests more. So right. they have def- uh, the co- the college life has definitely amplified what I already was interested in. I mean, whoever is seeing this, if you come here next year, your auditions are there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so good luck for that. Good luck for that. Yeah, and uh, tell me, uh, I think uh, about this cultural aspects in the college life that you have. I mean, there's a lot of mental processes that begin. I mean, you in the very beginning also mentioned this Vinay. I think um, this when you were just jamming and those seven people together jamming. It's sort of um, therapeutic, if I may, if I use the word. It is. So I mean. How was your mental health impacted while you were performing, while you were singing, while you were inter? I mean, do, interacting. I mean, like doing these kind of um, uh, things. Uh, how was that? So in school, I was one of those people who had like a really frightening stage fright. When I came here on campus, then I realized that when you perform something on stage, and now this is this. These are the same people that I used to jam with. and these are the same people that i perform at like a competitive stage as well okay. so these are the people that actually made me realize that when you actually are on stage you your main purpose is not to be the best your main purpose is whatever you are doing just do it 100% because that not only helps you you know connect with these people more but then the goal becomes like a collective goal and nothing right. by the way like i have never seen anything more motivating than a collective goal so yeah. that is something that a cultural thing that really taught me something that will help me in the future professionally emotionally mentally in every single prospect of life okay i think that and uh, i would want to add a, a tiny point so um you know your academically healthy lifestyle isn't really healthy if you're not engaging in the cultural aspect of college life i think it is a part and parcel of your college especially when if you're in a residential course like ours the culture here is entirely different and i think being a part of cultural events sort of helps you build your personality even better it's like a breath of fresh air that you really need when you're in a monot when you're caught up in a monotonous schedule like that of a yeah. b school i think exactly and there is one thing you listening to music as a personal experience and there is another thing exactly. listening to music in a collective experience yes. that gives you so much strength and power exactly. and energy from the people around you and and then then transferring that onto the stage and that also helps you take that stage fright off i think uh, stage fright is one thing that you deal while you are performing your art exactly. and while you are also doing a presentation in front of a, a per, say client or boss say when you step into the corporate world yeah. so i mean what is the process like to uh, deal with uh, the stage fright i mean is there any sort of mantra that you have probably moksha while you first go on to the stage that you uh, say to yourself or repeat and so that you can dismiss that fear i mean what's that it's it's a funny story i would want to say here so once in school i was about to uh, i was doing the comparing for a skit that we were doing right. and uh, it was our annual day and the entire auditorium filled with parents dark light and the one spotlight was on me and i was scared to death to step on the stage one of my seniors comes and says ki just imagine there's nobody sitting there they're all vegetables <laughs> so i that just sort of stuck with me and that's what i imagine every time i'm about to enter the stage i'm like there are there is nobody watching me i'm there that helps me like own the stage and just do what i'm going to do that is one thing that has helped me with stage fright that's that's so, such an interesting th- thing to do and i'm going to yes. note this down to i mean like imagine yes. everybody to be vegetables so i mean um kavin i tell me this i mean a lot of people come in having a lot of preconceived notions ideas and uh, you know myths sort of uh, do about to uh, safe cultures at the fest singing performing in band so you would you want to break some myths and you know tell them this is not what it is i mean this was what i actually realized the situation was exactly like so right now in this residential campus right so many cultures have experienced right so many like right. i have i can't even count now so one of in one of the instances that i was I dealt with was was the first time when I actually beatboxed here. Okay. 
Okay. So, when I was beatboxing, now beatboxing is something that not a lot of people like are used to yeah. hearing it. But like I'll tell you, like beatboxing is a very small community, but it's growing really fast. Like it's changing like rapidly. Like every single month, the genre changes. Sometimes it's hip hop, sometimes it's dubstep or something like that. Right. So you know, in a campus where there are more than nine hundred students, I found three people. and we decided we'll make a club right and that's how we made a beatboxing club right. by the way and now people are thinking about it like why is there a beatboxing club one day we were just like okay an impromptu session we'll call some people and they were like okay how to do it exactly we like just try boots and cats all right and they're like they're doing boots and cats okay and so basically when you beatbox you just like turn words into beats so boots and cats right okay okay so okay so all these things like intrigues people a lot and that's how conversation start basically now these people are telling us about okay this is what is happening in the law side now i'm telling them okay this is happening in the management side okay okay and that's how we connected right, right? and it's not only about like just having random conversations it like it tells you a lot about other people Right, right, and I think when you guys came together with the uh, beatbox club and as well, I mean, uh, I think I should acknowledge as well. When I has tried to teach me beatboxing as well, it's been a massive failure so far. But yeah, I'm learning. She beatboxes as well. No, I mean, I I try. I mean, the thing is, like you said, I mean, people coming together and you know, share. having that shared interest and then teaching one another exactly and that is such a beautiful thing and i think moksha you as well experienced it and right now you guys are also preparing for a play that you wish to take for competitions in uh, co- colleges such as i am indoor so i mean that common interest and how did you find guys together and what was the planning aspect of you putting up a play in a such a massive production scale what was that Tell, talk to me about the process So it all began when uh, the IIM's annual cult, IIM Indore's annual cultural fest, it's called Athar, was announced. So I was like, "There's a there's a competition that involves dramatics. So let's just do it." So I talked to people from my batch. So there was a uh, there was Swagato who wrote the script. So it was all originally written, everything done by ourselves. We figured out a way to refine it further. We started working on it. and then slowly we held auditions for it they were we were glad to see people actually turning up to audition like memorizing the dialogues and coming there on, on and auditioning so then we finalized and this sort it's it, it's still we're making um it more we are we're working on it but we do wish to like perform it in their ca- cultural fest i think and there is like one aspect of these kind of theater productions is people who like to act and then there are who script writers so there's a creative writing uh, aspects about people that coming together of all that and in the amalgamation of such beautiful things within the culture i mean it helps you grow so much i feel so i mean um so sort of to bring together this all of these things so do you guys want to you know perform something to leave with the audience that you guys wish to do i mean here i mean do you want to beatbox and act i, I mean can something beatbox. yeah yeah i think i think one thing that we should do i think everybody would be really enthusiastic to see is like why did you go rip off something okay so this is going to be freestyle i haven't prepared anything yes. by the way moksha will sing later after me <laughs> okay so it goes like this so how beatboxing starts is basically boots and cats now the second step comes where you basically let air out of your lips so that's called a lip roll so right now i'll put this all together and make a beat Yeah. That was that was fast. 
<laughs> very basic beat but yes <laughs> fantastic thank you so much and uh, moksha do you want to take up something you want to sing something for us if you want to uh, you can you can freestyle if you i mean like you can do it a cappella if you want to okay what do you main hu gum sum tu bhi khamosh hai सच है समय का ही सब दोष है धड़कन धड़कन एक गम रहता है वो जाने क्यों फिर भी दिल कहता है जीले जरा जीले जरा कहता है दिल जीले जरा सफर हम नवा पास जिले अगलावा मजबूरी आन जान दी पसूरी जहर बने हाँ तेरी पी जावा मैं पूरी आना सी ओ नहीं आया दिल बाग बाग मेरा टकराया कागा बोल के डस जावे पावा क्यो दी चूरी रावा च बावा च ओनू लुकावा कोई मैनू ना रोके मेरे डोल जुदाइया दी तेन खबर कि वे हो वे आ जावे दिल तेरा पूरा भी ना हो वे आ बनिया बनाइया दी गल बात कि वे हो वे आ जावे दिल तेरा पूरा भी ना हो वे Yeah, we can acknowledge the fact that this has been absolutely <laughs> brilliant. Thank you so much, Vinayak and Moksha, for coming in and you know truly showcasing the talent that we have here and the cultures that it takes and the effort that it takes to bring it all together and make a beautiful art, beautiful art out of it. Thank you so much, guys. This has been amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having us.